Americans claim Russia is filling low orbit with satellite fighters. Is this true? And why does the Pentagon need it? And what will give Russia a giant constellation of satellites in orbit, but all in order? So, 2024 is the year when mass production of satellites for the Sphere satellite constellation, the largest in the history of Russia, will begin. How will this constellation be organized? What is its importance for citizens and businesses? And why is it one of the key elements of Russia's technological, economic, and even political sovereignty. Let's get to the bottom of it. One of the main priorities of Russia's digital development is the creation of its own low-orbit satellite constellation to provide fast and cheap internet access throughout the country. This was announced by the Minister of Digital Development Maxut Shadaya. This constellation should be on par with leading international projects such as Starlink. On May 21st, one of the leading Russian satellite manufacturers Reshetnev JSC reported that the operator company, whose task will be to manage this satellite constellation, has been determined. The new orbital constellations will be managed by Gonitz Satellite System Joint Stock Company by decision of Roscosmos State Corporation, the report says. The mentioned project is expensive, large-scale, and affects far, not only the Ministry of Digital Affairs. The plans of Roscosmos to create a Russian constellation under the working name Global Multifunctional Info Communication Satellite System first became known in November 2017. At that time, it was called System Ether and was already planned as a Russian response to foreign broadband projects Starlink and OneWeb. At that time, plans were voiced to deploy 300 satellites in an 870-kilometer high orbit, providing full signal coverage of the Earth's surface. There were plans for extensive international cooperation, both in terms of joint production of satellites and in terms of selling Constellation services to customers around the world. Time has made its adjustments. Long before the military operation, Western countries refused to supply Russia with components for the production of satellites. And in 2022, in fact, sanctions were imposed against the entire space industry. Today, it is unpromising to count on a major international project, and the opportunities to offer communication services in other countries are limited. At the same time, the importance of its own independent from foreign players' production of space equipment has sharply increased. In 2018 to 19, the project has changed dramatically. The number of spacecraft increased to 640 and the name changed to Sphere. The project became more focused on Russia's immediate needs and included not only communications, but also navigation, broadcasting, data transmission for the Internet of Things and relay. In essence, Sphere became a project for a unified orbital Russian ecosystem designed to ensure the consistency of various satellite constellations that had previously been operating autonomously. Unlike foreign competitors, Roscosmos has gone the way of creating not one global, but several regional systems by coverage areas on Earth. At present, five satellite constellations for communication and information transmission and five constellations for remote sensing of the Earth are being created within the sphere. Their main objectives will be continuous observation of the Russian territory, including in real time. The launch of the first satellite of the SKIF constellation in October 2022 marked the beginning of the sphere's realization. This constellation is an integral part of the sphere and is responsible for providing broadband internet access. SKIFD, the demonstrator, showed an access speed of 6.5 megabits per second. These are not final figures, for this apparatus is primarily important to test new technical solutions. In total, as expected, 12 spacecraft group SCIF will operate in orbit at an altitude of about 8,000 kilometers. This will make it possible to service northern latitudes inaccessible for traditional satellites in geostationary orbit, including the Arctic and the Northern Sea Route. Ice navigation requires a lot of different satellite information determination of ice conditions, which is performed by satellite radars, and data from weather satellites. Multispectral satellite images are needed to refine the cartography of the region. GLONASS system is needed for navigation. For operation of special buoys and obtaining data from the water, the system of the so-called Marathon Series Internet Web will help. And of course, during sailing you need constant communication, both voice and internet. All of this is provided by the sphere. The Internet of Things is the work with sensors installed on land-based devices. These can be sensors of motion, the state of machines and mechanisms, in other words, everything that is necessary for remote control of various equipment. A classic example are sensors that report gas pipeline malfunctions. The signal from them is first sent into space and then transmitted to Earth to repair crews. By the way, Gazprom is one of the Sphere's partners. With the direct participation of corporations, the Smotr V series satellites for remote sensing of the Earth are being created. These satellites will solve a wide range of tasks, detailed monitoring of gas main pipelines, detection of methane leakage, 
control over construction of facilities at the fields, mapping and observation of license areas, etc. The Marathon system for the Internet of Things will include more than 250 satellites. They will be placed on 12 orbital planes at an altitude of about 750 kilometers. Conveyor production of these satellites is being established right now. There are plans to modernize the enterprise and install a new assembly line which will make it possible to produce five satellites by 2025 and 44 vehicles by 2026. The assembly line is the key innovation introduced in modern satellite production. It is exactly what the multiple increase of apparatuses in Earth orbit mentioned by the head of state should provide. A couple of decades ago satellites could be compared to large universal harvesters. They were bulky, hermetically sealed, and assembled on slipways. The design of modern satellites is sharply simplified, their mass and functionality is reduced. This dramatically increases production capabilities. Their mass launch into orbit is possible with the help of container launches. All sphere satellites are assembled just according to the modern non-hermetic scheme. In addition, to simplify mass production, it was decided to make spacecraft on a single platform. Any satellite consists of a universal platform with service equipment, which is responsible for bringing the satellite to a given point, its orientation, opening of solar panels, ensuring operability, collection, and transmission of telemetry to Earth. In other words, any satellite is 70% unified. Moreover, only payloads are unified depending on a particular space constellation. The principle is simple, maximum unification to ensure serialization. The platform will be used, for example, by the Burkutto and Burkut VN constellations of observation and high-resolution imaging satellites, as well as the Burkut H and Burkut RE radar monitoring satellites. The first satellites are scheduled to be launched in 2025, and the designs are currently being developed and peer-reviewed. More recently, it was decided to join the Sphere project with the Griffin microsatellites based on the CubSat platform. A group of 136 satellites will survey the Earth's surface with a resolution of about 2.5 meters. With its help, it will be possible to receive data every 30 hours from the territory of Russia and at least 38 hours around the world. The Sphere program is being introduced to extend research and development work, such as the development of a laser communication system between spacecraft. In particular, it is planned to develop two terminals for inter-satellite communication and later ground equipment for space-to-Earth communication. It is worth mentioning the military significance of the Sphere constellation. Reconnaissance and target designation using both multispectral images and radar data is a mandatory part of any military operation. Equally obvious is the importance of constant secure communications and the ability to work with drones. It can be expected that the entire functionality of the space constellation will be used to improve Russia's defense capabilities. As early as 2024, it will be possible to see the first launches under the program, and from 2026, they should become mass launches, making up the main payload for Russian launch vehicles. The Sphere project is characterized by maximum pragmatism and corresponds to the most modern production practices. The realization of the project will make it possible to connect any even the most remote points of Russia with the help of satellite internet. Already in the horizon of the current decade, it is necessary to provide access to high-speed internet to almost all Russian territories. We will solve this task, including through a multiple increase of our satellite constellation. We will allocate 116 billion rubles for its development, President Vladimir Putin said on this occasion in his latest address to the Federal Assembly. By increasing high technologies in the space industry, Russia strengthens its technological, industrial, scientific, and geopolitical sovereignty. That is why Putin pays special attention to this issue. The Russian space industry already directly affects the everyday life of every citizen of the country through GLONASS satellites and navigation on smartphone screens. However, in the coming years, this influence will become much wider. Russian business will get its own national space communication and monitoring systems. Domestic meteorologists will completely abandon information from Western weather satellites as early as this year. The full functioning and safety of strategic transportation corridors will be ensured, and Russia will confirm the status of a great space power, which it deserves as the country of the world's first satellite. Well, now let's turn to the Americans who claim that Russia is filling the low orbit with satellite fighters. Is it so, and why does the Pentagon need it? This is how designers Max Parr envisioned the meeting of two spacecraft in low orbit, an optical military reconnaissance satellite, an inspector satellite, in other words, a Russian-made satellite fighter. To those people who caught the era of former actor Ronald Reagan's fighter satellite presidency in the United States, the current news probably seems remotely familiar. The Strategic Defense Initiative, the Soviet Union, the Evil Empire, Star Wars, all of this had a frankly Hollywood, pathetic connotation, but it affected the common public quite seriously. However, in the early noughties, when the Americans were withdrawing from the Fundamental ABM Treaty, 
Their rhetoric was also similar. At that time, however, the main enemy of the United States was nominally North Korea and Iran, which all these years had not even a theoretical possibility to reach the United States. Iran has none to this day. But the rhetoric was the same. Hundreds of insiders and officials hyped up the situation and assured the public, a bit stunned by such propagandistic pressure, that the missile defense posture areas in Poland and Romania would perfectly protect them from the terrible Iranian missiles. And exactly the same hysteria, for lack of another word, is now being stirred up around two Russian low-orbit satellites Cosmos, 2553, and recently launched Cosmos, 2576. While Cosmos, 2553 is supposed to be a kind of a test bed for many satellites with nuclear warheads on board, Cosmos 2576 is already considered a real combat vehicle, belonging to the category of satellite fighters. Here's what Pentagon spokesman Patrick Ryder said about it just the day before, quote, After a number of observations of the satellite launched on May 16th, we are confident that Russia has launched into low Earth orbit a vehicle that our experts believe is more than likely a weapon directed against other spacecraft. Its orbit is dangerously close to a U.S. government space satellite, and it is allegedly capable of causing serious damage to other spacecraft in low Earth orbit. The Americans claim that Cosmos 2542, launched in 2019 under the Leveler program, not only passed dangerously close to the U.S. spacecraft and attempted to impact it, but also independently sent two other vehicles of similar significance into orbit. In general, in May 2004, the Americans started repeating the same thing that they had said some three months earlier. Then it was, so to speak, a trial balloon, but now they are using more and more heavy artillery. In the month of May alone, three top officials at the Department of Defense and the State Department have had long conversations about Russian anti-satellite devices in low orbit. Is this really the case? I doubt that the Americans really know all the details of our programs in the near space, and they draw the main conclusions from their own ideas about security and based on the political agenda that benefits them. Let's remember the same SOI, the breakup of the PAPRO Treaty, and the very recent example of the DRMD. On the other hand, a number of large aerospace concerns, as well as smaller startups, which usually hide behind groups of well-sponsored development teams from the Pentagon and its space agency, are now busy developing universal subsatellites. Small spacecraft that can help wage warfare through optical and electronic reconnaissance, destroy or disable other satellites, and even be an effective part of an orbital missile defense system. This is really about a dozen or so major programs for at least hundreds of vehicles, the names of which are impossible to remember. Obviously, most of them are stillborn projects, but even if some of them are put into operation, it will change the balance of strategic forces between the superpowers very much. Therefore, if the Russian Air Force is preparing for such an influx of unfriendly foreign satellites into close orbit, this process is quite natural. The only thing that makes us personally uncomfortable here is the close nature of our programs. In this case, on the contrary, we should say a lot and often that yes, we are preparing and will do it if the need arises. What do you think?